the Terps knew it would be a tough test. And in the first half, they were up to the challenge, trailing by just two at the break. But second half foul trouble and struggles from the field led to a 22 to eight rebounding differential in the second half. And in the end, the number one overall seed, Kansas, advances to the Elite Eight, defeating the Terps 79 to 63. In the second half, uh, you know, it was we had to play uh, difficult lineups because we were in foul trouble. So guys had to scramble and do this and do that, and um, it just made it tough for us to get rebounds because everyone was scrambling. You know, they're, they're strong bodies. You know, they're tight to glass. You know, um, they, they boxed out on offense and, and defense. End, you know, and you know, we just we just couldn't get around. Wish we were still playing, but lost to a great team. We we had a lot of open looks. They just didn't make them tonight. Um, you know, you got to give them a lot. A lot, of, a lot of credit, you know, there was like a four-minute span there in the second half where they were just, just terrific, um, you know, and, they, and we couldn't come back from that. Uh, they, I feel like they made uh, every single play down the stretch, uh, found an open guy and different things like that. And um, like I said, the, the good thing is we lost to a really good team, a team that could possibly win this whole thing. I just have nothing but love for all these guys and everyone a part of this program, and, you know, I have that love for the rest of my life. The season certainly still a success. The Terps made their first Sweet 16 since 2003. The question going into the offseason, who will return? Jake Lehman and Rashid Suleiman both set to graduate, and the other three starters, all big names on NBA draft boards. But for now, this team just wants to be remembered as winners. From Louisville, Matt Present, CNS TV. Fathers and sons playing catch. It's a baseball tradition, isn't it? But for the Chef Boys, it's been a little more than that. The opportunity to grow up in a college dugout. And for John Michael to be a part of this dog pile last year in Columbia. Bobby Roos strikes out Patrick Harrington. And after qualifying for the NCAA tournament for the first time since 1971, the Terps have won their first regional title in program history. And it's not just a team celebration, but a family celebration as well. Pretty special. I, I actually, technically, I just don't, I wanted to make sure he wasn't going to be on the bottom of that pile. So he tasked pitcher Brady Kirkpatrick with tossing John Michael on top. That it was like the best time in Maryland, right, for me, because my friend who threw me on the dog pile, named Brady, he really helped me. John Michael is the bat and ball boy and gets to see the action right beside Dad and his squad. It's kind of fun because they take care of me and just make me laugh. And after the game, the three chefs always make time for a little family catch. I do think it's important you know, to, to, to lay some groundwork so that they have as good a habits as they can have when they're young. John Michael wants to follow in the footsteps of the Terps' middle infield. I really look up to Brandon Lau or um, um, Kevin Smith because those are my two favorite positions. And Sam just got his first set of catcher's gear, inspired by a big leaguer his dad coached at the University of Louisiana Lafayette, Jonathan Lucroy. It's a cool thing, right? Yes. You watch Luke catch and hit and... Watch Danny Farquhar come out of the bullpen for the Mariners, and it's pretty cool stuff, right? Yeah. yeah we watch a lot of MLB now. But most of all, Coach Chef says, having his sons around the game keeps him grounded. What they do for me is try, uh, they, they kind of take a little bit of attention out of the whole thing. And Sam knows just how to make him laugh. Last year, he was a good coach at the base, but now he's in the dugout doing nothing. <laughs> From Bob Turtle Smith Stadium, Matt Present, Maryland Baseball Network. Walk-off winners. Base hit up the middle. Pie celebrations. The two have become synonymous in Baltimore. Ever since dangerously delicious pies seized the opportunity, since shaving cream burned players' eyes, they had the perfect alternative. Why don't you think about taking some cream pies over? Said so that's a great idea. The Pies made their on-field debut, opening day of 2013. We were ecstatic. I mean, it was jumping, you know, we were home watching the game and just literally jumping off the sofa, <laughs> you know, jumping up the down. We couldn't believe it. And they have become a staple of Oriole victories ever since. However, entering 2016, the Orioles announced they banned the Pie celebrations due to safety concerns. 
this opening day, we still didn't have a definitive answer. So we're like, well, we'll just take them pies over. And after a Matt Weeders walk off, Adam Jones got his hands on a pie. We really didn't think it was going to happen. It was a total surprise. It was, I mean, our hearts were like beating out of our chest. From sweet pies to pot pies and quiches as well, Dangerously Delicious does breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And two pies a day are for the O's. A lot of people, they look at you and they say, oh, you know, pie for dinner, but we do it with steak and cheese. And Wartman hopes her Canton shop will remain a staple in the community. I think we need something. Baltimore, we need that. <laughs> it kind of uplifts the city. In Baltimore, Matt Present, CNS TV. His voice is unyielding, relentless. I'm not saying anything negative. I'm cheering on our guys. He bellows with encouragement and has nicknames for all the wrestlers. What can Brown do for you? And I see this guy, uh, older guy, he's like doing stairs. I'm, I'm like, why is he doing stairs? And then he just starts like yelling and like chanting and all this stuff. Brown first encountered Ficker while well, at a summer camp at Cole Fieldhouse. A lot of the teammates told me like, uh, yeah, that's Robin Ficker. Ficker's heckling began in the 80s at then Washington Bullets games. He used to get under the skin of Charles Barkley. When Charles Barkley said that he didn't need vegetables, I'd bring all the vegetables to the game and say, Charles, you got a little spring onion step. Barkley was so impressed, he personally hired Ficker to chastise his 1993 NBA Finals opponent. That's right, Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls. But for the Terps, it's not just an advantage at home. Ficker travels to all the away matches as well, which gives guys like Shaheen Brown the confidence they need to take down their opponent. Well, you can pick out his voice out of everyone else's just because he's, he's literally shouting the, the entire time. Some, some people like him, some people don't. I know our guys like to have that energy. Rolla Mascola, you got any potholes in Iowa? He'll fill them in. You want your driveway fixed? Steamroller Mascola will fix it. As a local defense attorney, Ficker knows how to sell himself to a jury. And in this courtroom, he hasn't lost one yet. 